Until recently, the Apple Watch was one of the few smartwatches that did not natively track your sleep stages. But with the beta release of watchOS 9, that has finally changed. However, are the sleep results you get from the Apple Watch actually any good? Well, that's what we're gonna test in this video. We will analyze 18 nights of sleep data from the Apple Watch and see how this compares to the sleep stages measured by an EEG device that can actually measure your brain waves and was specifically designed for sleep stage tracking. We will also check how the performance of the Apple Watch compares to 37 other smartwatches I've tested. Hello everyone. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now, when Apple first announced their new sleep stage tracking functionality, they did not provide much detail as to how it actually works. But let's briefly summarize what they did tell us and what this means. Now, the best way of measuring your sleep stages, what scientists also refer to as the gold standard, is called polysomnography. This basically means measuring the electrical signals coming from the brain while you're sleeping, and in addition, also measuring the movements of your eyes and some muscles. This way, scientists can get an accurate picture of what sleep stages you went through. I've done this close to 100 times myself, but I have to say it's not the most comfortable way of sleeping. So to make sleep tracking more comfortable and readily available, Apple trained a computer algorithm that takes in the heart rate and movement data from the Apple Watch and uses that to predict your sleep stages. To create this algorithm, they collected both polysomnography data and heart rate and movement data with the Apple Watch on what they at least say is the largest and most diverse study population for a wearable. That algorithm then uses the sleep stages as measured with polysomnography and tries to predict the same sleep stages with just the heart rate and movement data from the Apple Watch. Now, if Apple has enough data and good machine learning tools, they could have potentially created a very good sleep stage tracking algorithm, making sleep tracking available to the general public. So let's see if the Apple Watch is any good at sleep stage tracking. So how did I actually test this? Well, I evaluated the sleep stage tracking of the Apple Watch for 18 nights by comparing it to the Dream 2 EEG headband, a device that can actually measure my brain waves and was specifically designed for sleep stage tracking. Now, as I mentioned before, the best reference device would be a polysomnography device, but this would be too cumbersome for me to use for 18 nights. Luckily, in a scientific paper, the Dream 2 EEG headband was shown to be pretty reliable at sleep stage tracking as I discussed in this video linked up here. The EEG device should therefore give us an impression if the Apple Watch is good enough for sleep stage tracking or if it's really bad. In this case for the testing, I used the Apple Watch 7, but I think both older and newer Apple Watches will give more or less the same results, since the heart rate and movement measurements are roughly equally reliable between generations, as we saw in previous videos. Measuring heart rate and movement is especially easy during the night when you're generally relatively still with a low heart rate. Now I should mention that I'm using the beta version of watchOS 9, but I suspect nothing will change with regards to the sleep stage tracking in the official release, since the algorithm was already trained. So let's see how the sleep tracking of the Apple Watch compares to an EEG device. Here I show an overview of the sleep test results. On top are the sleep stages as recorded by the EEG device, and on the left are the sleep stages as recorded by the Apple Watch. I wore both the EEG device and the Apple Watch to bed at the same time for 18 nights, and we will see how close the predictions of the Apple Watch are to those of the EEG device. Now each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the sleep stages according to the Dream 2, was predicted as each sleep stage by the Apple Watch. Now, if they perfectly agree, all values on the diagonal should be 100%. First of all, we see that about 89% of what was deep sleep according to the EEG device was also deep sleep according to the Apple Watch. Now, this is actually very good as most watches show much poorer agreement with the EEG device. If deep sleep according to the EEG device was predicted differently by the Apple Watch, it was predicted as light sleep at about 11%. And we can see that even better based on the individual nights. On top here we have the sleep stages according to the Dream 2 EEG headband, 
with the clock time along the horizontal axis and the sleep stages on the vertical axis. On the bottom we have a similar plot, but now for the Apple Watch. I've highlighted all the EEG recorded deep sleep in purple here. For this night we can indeed see that basically all of the deep sleep recorded by the EEG device was also recorded as deep sleep by the Apple Watch, so this is looking really good. The Apple Watch is predicted a tiny bit of extra deep sleep right here. And this second night shows much more of the same results. The Apple Watch predicted much of the same deep sleep segments as the EEG headband, but just detected a little bit extra deep sleep as well. Still, this is looking really good. I also wanted to look at a night where I had poor sleep quality to see how the Apple Watch deals with that when I don't have a normal sleep pattern, and that is displayed right here. As you can see, I was awake for about 2 hours in the middle of the night. Interestingly though, the Apple Watch correctly detected this and was basically also spot on when it comes to the deep sleep it detected. So it's good to see that it also seems to deal well or at least good enough with disturbed sleep. The only thing that it does generally tend to do is detect a bit more deep sleep than the EEG device, as you can also see right here. The same deep sleep was detected more or less, but some extra deep sleep was also detected, though not a lot of it. Still though, the Apple Watch shows some of the best deep sleep tracking agreement I've seen for any device so far. And the same is true for light sleep detection. About 84% of what the EEG device detected as light sleep was also detected as light sleep by the Apple Watch. This is again quite good. If it was predicted differently, it was most often predicted as being deep sleep, but sometimes also as REM sleep or awake time. REM sleep agreement is also quite good at about 67%. This means that about two thirds of what the EEG device predicted as being REM sleep was also predicted as REM sleep by the Apple Watch. Now before showing you the rest of the results, I want to briefly explain something. A 67% REM sleep agreement might not sound like much, but it's actually pretty good. REM sleep has historically in my testing been one of the most difficult sleep stages for a smartwatch to track. The easiest way of measuring REM sleep is by measuring the movement of the eyes. REM stands for rapid eye movement, meaning the eyes move quite quickly during the sleep stage, mostly side to side. This important characteristic of REM sleep is quite easy to measure for an EEG device or polysomnography device, but impossible to directly measure with a smartwatch. Therefore, most smartwatches actually struggle to accurately detect REM sleep using just movement and heart rate. But the algorithm of the Apple Watch seems to do this quite well. Now, getting back to the results. If the Apple Watch did predict something different than the EEG device when it comes to REM sleep, it was mostly predicted as light sleep. And we can see that clearly based on the individual nights as well. Now this is a similar plot to before, but now with the REM sleep as measured by the EEG device marked in red. As you can see, there's a good agreement between the Apple Watch and the EEG device. The Apple Watch basically detected the same REM sleep segments as the EEG device. And we can actually see that for many nights, like this one here for instance. Again, the same REM sleep segments were detected by both the Apple Watch and the EEG headband. The main inconsistency I could find is that the Apple Watch quite often misses my first short REM segment in the beginning of my night, as you can see in this night right here for example, where the EEG device did detect some REM sleep, but the Apple Watch did not. And we can see the same thing in this example night right here. Again, in the beginning of the night, we see that the Apple Watch misses one REM sleep segment, but it does show a good agreement otherwise throughout the night. So this type of inconsistency happened a few times, but generally the Apple Watch was more or less spot on, or at least good enough to detect all REM sleep segments. This also means that for most nights, we can see the sleep cycles based on just the data from the Apple Watch. Now you go through roughly four to six sleep cycles each night, each one starting with light and deep sleep, marked in blue, and each one ending in REM sleep, marked in red. As you can see, I likely had one, two, three, four complete cycles this night, and a fifth partial one. The Apple Watch detects the same sleep cycles as the EEG device, so we would be able to see all one, two, three, four of them, and even the fifth partial one. And we can see the same thing for most of the nights, Generally, it will detect my sleep cycles quite well, as you can also see in this night right here, where I likely had one, two, three, four, five complete sleep cycles. Detecting the moments I was awake was also done quite accurately by the Apple Watch. 
roughly 70% of what the EEG device detected as awake time was also detected as awake time by the Apple Watch. If it was predicted differently, it was mostly predicted as being light sleep. Now this actually makes a lot of sense, as light sleep is the closest sleep stage to being awake. Looking at the individual nights, we can actually see that quite well. This is again a similar plot to before, with the sleep stages according to the EEG device on top and those of the Apple Watch on the bottom. In green, I mark my awake moments according to the EEG device. As you can see, there's a quite good agreement between the EEG device and the Apple Watch for this night. The Apple Watch mostly agrees well on both the shorter and the longer awake moments. Though it did detect a tiny bit of extra awake time right here and also right here. And we see quite a good agreement for many nights, as we also see for this one right here for instance. It mostly detected my awake moments, though it missed some here near the end of the night. So it's definitely not a perfect agreement, as we can also see for this night right here, where the Apple Watch detects a bunch of extra awake time right here, here, and also here. However, overall, I would say it's doing quite well. Now, this is all looking quite good. However, it's important to know how this performance compares to that of other watches. So let's see how these numbers compare to 37 other watches I tested over the last years. However, first a quick side note. If you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, I'm planning to start back up with my newsletter and posting more off the cuff things on my Instagram and my YouTube Shorts channel. So if you're interested in any of those, those are linked below. Of course, you would make me really happy and it would help my efforts if you subscribe to this YouTube channel. But of course, that's totally up to you. Now enough self-promotion. Let's look at the performance of the Apple Watch compared to many other watches. This graph shows an overview of the agreement of different watches with the EEG device. Along the horizontal axis, we have the average agreement over the four individual sleep stages. And on the vertical axis, we have the agreement of the worst sleep stage for each watch. The better the agreement, the more to the top right the device is. And as you can see, the best agreeing devices I tested before include different Fitbits, whoop straps, and the Withing Sleep Analyzer. If I now want to plot the Apple Watch in the same plot, I actually have to make the axis a bit bigger, so let's do that. So that plot is displayed right here. Again, right here are the best performing watches from before, so the Fitbits, whoop straps, and the Withing Sleep Analyzer. However, the Apple Watch, which is marked in red, actually shows a better agreement with the EEG device than any of these other watches I tested. The overall average agreement is just a little bit better, so that's the horizontal axis here, where we see that the Apple Watch is just a little bit further along than, for instance, the Fitbit Inspire 2. But the main thing that the Apple Watch did really well is that it performs quite well and really consistent over all four sleep stages, which means it's higher up on the vertical axis. So this is actually looking really good for the Apple Watch. Now, Apple mentioned one more thing when they revealed their new sleep tracking algorithm. They mentioned that the Apple Watch can also detect when you might have woken up. And this is also directly related to when the Apple Watch thinks you fell asleep for the night and when you woke up in the morning. So can the Apple Watch actually detect this? And in this graph, I show how many minutes the Apple Watch differed from the EEG device in detecting when I fell asleep and when I woke up. On the vertical axis, we have the 18 nights over which I tested the Apple Watch. And the blue dots right here indicate the difference in minutes when it comes to falling asleep and the yellow ones when it comes to waking up. So the closer to zero these numbers are, the better the agreement with the EEG device. Now the biggest disagreement was minus 50 minutes when it comes to falling asleep, meaning that the Apple Watch detected me as falling asleep 50 minutes before I actually did. I think I was actually just laying very still for a bit, so it recorded me as being asleep. And the biggest difference in waking up was minus 48 minutes, meaning it detected me as waking up 48 minutes before I actually did. However, overall, the differences are not that big, mostly being within 10 minutes or so of the EEG device, so this is not that bad. So overall, I would say that this is looking super promising for the Apple Watch. However, before I get to my final conclusions, I want to mention a few important limitations of the testing that I showed in this video. 
First of all, I just tested a watch on me, a Caucasian male that is still relatively young, or at least I like to think so. Though Apple says that they trained their algorithm on a diverse population, a lot of tech is still being developed by and for white men, so there might be an overrepresentation of data based on this subpopulation, meaning that the algorithm might actually work better on me than on some other people. Second, I used a reference EEG device with fewer electrodes than you would typically use with polysomnography. So though I do think this gives us a good impression of the performance of the Apple Watch, I will try to test it with polysomnography in the future. Third, I used a beta version of watchOS 9. Though I suspect nothing will change with regards to the sleep tracking in the official release, I cannot be sure. Now the next thing I want to talk about is not really a limitation of my testing, but I want to discuss one of the major features that is still lacking from the Apple Watch when it comes to sleep tracking. The thing I'm still missing is automatic interpretation of the sleep results and sleep coaching based on these results. I think it would be amazing if based on your sleep stages and other sleep metrics, the Apple Watch would give you advice on your sleep schedule, exercise routine and other things related to sleep because it can be difficult to interpret these data for people that are not familiar with them. Now the whoop strap and also the aura ring do this to some degree already. However, how to interpret sleep data deserves a separate video. Now the final limitation of my testing concerns my personal preferences. I actually read in some YouTube comments and even on Reddit that there's some impression that I'm an Apple fanboy. Someone even commented that they thought I had a girlfriend or fiance that works at Apple. Well, I have to say I like some Apple products just because they work well. For instance, I use MacBooks because they're Unix based and it helps me with my work. However, on this channel, I always aim to share the raw results as I get them. And if there's something wrong with any product, whether from Apple, Samsung or Huawei, I will try to tell you. And for those of you that care, I don't have a girlfriend that works at Apple or a girlfriend at all for that matter. I'm single and I'm ready to mingle. <laughs> Let's get back to the serious stuff. We were talking about the sleep tracking performance of the Apple Watch. Now, out of all the devices I've tested, the Apple Watch has shown the best performance, at least based on the metrics I use to evaluate it. There are some devices that are very close in performance, like Fitbit and Whoop, but the money and effort that Apple has probably been able to spend on getting a good reference set of data seems to have paid off. We will have to see how it performs on people besides myself, but my first impression is a really positive one. This also means that at least based on my testing, the Apple Watch is currently the best performing device in two of the most important health and sports tracking categories, heart rate tracking and sleep stage tracking. Heart rate tracking is something that Apple has been more or less the leader in for a couple of years now, and you can find videos on that right up here. If you want to buy an Apple Watch, another device, or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something as small as toilet paper, and at the same time support the channel, there are different affiliate links in the description below that do not cost you any extra, and some even provide a discount. In the meantime, I hope that this video provided some value and you learned something more about the different smartwatches. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.